Alright everyone, how's it going? This is Rexbury here, and welcome back to part 2 of my Anime Studio tutorial for beginners. And this episode we're going to be going over the style palette here, and uh, if you guys watched the last episode you know that um, we actually didn't really go on this uh, little palette here. Um, we just briefly kind of touched on it and explained um, kind of what it's used for. So in this episode we're actually going to be uh, going through some of the options in which it has here. And um, of course we're not going to be able to go over all the options because some of the options are going to be kind of used uh, later on in the tutorial, so we're going to kind of uh, have a chance, or rather, I'm going to have a chance to uh, kind of re-explain those to you guys, so um, that's pretty much that, and uh, yeah, <laughs> so I guess with that said, let's just go ahead and get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do here is go to File, and New, or Control N, to start a brand new uh, kind of scene here, and we're going to want to go ahead and create a shape, uh, so you can basically go ahead and do that by going to the Draw subsection within the Tools palette, and uh, click on the draw shape option here, or hotkey E. Alright, and when you click that, you get a list of options here of different shapes in which you can uh, use to uh, pretty much, uh, I guess, create your little scene here. And try to choose a um, pretty basic shape, pretty primitive shape, such as the rectangle, oval, or the uh, triangle. And I guess the star works pretty good too, but I would recommend one of these first three shapes here, just because the effects that we're going to be putting on here, and the color and such, are going to show up a little bit better on these three shapes here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with the rectangle, but you can go with the oval or the triangle and I guess if you really want to the star all right and what you want to do once you've picked your shape is click and drag anywhere on the screen here um, it doesn't have to be within the purple area here um, because we're not really going to need to render this out um, we're just gonna go ahead and kind of test out some things along um, the lines of uh, just kind of coloring it and uh, giving it some uh, simple um, I guess effects here so once you've created your ship, I'm going to go ahead and actually move this a little bit down here. Not that I need to, and just kind of my own little specifications, I guess. Um, but we're going to go ahead and head over to the Styles Palette now. Now, the Styles Palette, um, there's a lot of things we can do in here. There's a lot of ways that we can actually kind of uh, configure this. However, um, I'm going to go over um, two basic ways that you can do this here. And um, I usually do it by just kind of uh, painting the, or selecting the uh, shape here and then just kind of uh, creating a color and such for it. However, there are other ways which you can do this. However, I haven't really explored too much into them. Um, but I do know a bit of how they kind of work. And, um, you know, if you guys really want to, you guys can kind of look up on your own. Um, if, um, you know, you guys are a bit more curious about some of these options here. But nonetheless, uh, basically, you'll notice here that we have a white rectangle here. Now let me go ahead and delete this really quick. Now let's say you wanted to, when you create your object, you want it to be a certain color. Um, not only just by once you create your object uh, changing it to a certain color, but when you create the object itself you want it to become automatically a certain color. So what we're going to do to do that is obviously select our shape here um, and head over to the style palette here and on the very first color here, um, the fill color, we're going to go ahead and click on it. And we're going to go ahead and go to something like a, let's head over to the green here, because green is my favorite color. And uh, let's go ahead and go something along the lines of this. This looks pretty handy. Alright, and now let's go ahead and create our shape. And there we go, we now have a green rectangle, or I guess in this case it's kind of a square more than a rectangle. But nonetheless, it is green, and uh, we didn't do anything but change the color and uh, go ahead and create it. So, let's say now um, that we know to do that, instead of just having it um, become a color when we create it, let's go ahead and say that we want to, um, no matter what color it is, let's go back to white here. Once we create our object, we want to go ahead and manually change the color of it. So, to do this, and there's multiple ways to do, uh, rather, multiple ways um, that you can do this. Um, and one of these ways is to basically, um, what you're going to be able to do is um, to be able to pull this off here, is um, you're going to want to go ahead and under the fill subsection within the tools palette, um, you'll notice these first three option, or options, uh, select shape, create shape, and paint bucket. Now, personally, I really don't see that big of a difference between these three options. Um, I have explored all of them, and I know what they all do, and there are admittedly some differences between them, but it isn't really that great. However, I will go, you know, just very, very briefly over what the differences are. So, basically, um, we're going to go ahead and start off with the select shape here. Now, selecting a shape basically just means that it's selected, and you can feel free to make changes to it. Now, when we do that, you'll notice that the name of the shape here um, also changes 
change it so we can kind of give it a name. Now, keep in mind that once you name this, it's not going to name the layer down here. We're going to get into what layers are a little later in the tutorial uh, series, but basically for now, you can, uh, basically if you want to, choose to name your shape here, and just for the sake of the tutorial, um, I'm going to go ahead and just name it square underscore zero, because zero is the starting number in computer languages, or coding and stuff like that, and I know this isn't really coding, it's kind of just an animation program, but still, um, I like to keep to that kind of moral, I guess. Alright, so we have square underscore zero here. Now, if we click off, you'll notice that it automatically just kind of goes away. And um, to find that again, up here, as you guys can uh, see, um, you just go ahead and click shapes and choose square underscore zero. Alright, and when you choose that, it'll go right back to where it was. And the cool thing about this is, when you go ahead and choose a different color here, uh, again, let's go ahead and choose a, no, actually, let's go ahead and choose a nice little blue here. There we go, a cool little shade of blue. It will change to blue, and if we hit enter to kind of confirm that, um, that will all work out nicely. Now, also, let's go ahead and change that back to another color here by using the uh, select, or rather, create shape button here. So, um, hotkey U as well. So we can go ahead and hit that, and um, let's click on our shape here again. And what we want to do for the create shape, unlike the select shape tool, um, to confirm this, you actually need to go spacebar, and then enter. So it's kind of like spacebar to apply the uh, color or texture, and enter, just like the select shape, is the confirmation on that. So now we have a nice white square. However, let's say we want to go back to the green square here. So what we do is we'd go to our select shape, and click on our shape, and go shapes, and square zero. And actually, oh, you know what? Okay, never mind, guys. <laughs> Well, I just real okay. Actually, yeah, never mind. Um, hmm. Actually, I think that was in another program. <laughs> oh my goodness, I apologize, guys. Um, okay, that was in another program, is what that does. Okay, so what does this do anyway? Um, and I know, I know what it does, but I th isn't there a way to do this here? Hmm. Okay, well maybe it's just for the sake of organization, I guess. Hmm. Okay then, well I guess you guys can go ahead and kind of, uh, you guys can basically see what that does. Um, for the most part I believe it's just kind of organization thing, and an organization thing rather. And um, yeah, you can kind of apply it to different shapes or something as well, something like that. Um, again guys, I don't really use that anyways. Um, so, and you know, you guys don't really need to know about it at, um, either. I mean, not saying that you guys don't need to know about it for forever. I mean, it's a pretty good idea, I guess, to kind of explore it a little bit, but it's not something that is needed um, and that will be needed later on in the um, kind of the series and when you guys started making animations and such. So basically, let's just go ahead and continue down the line here. All right, so basically, we have our nice little green square here. Now, let's say we want to add some effects to this square. Um, so there's kind of multiple ways to do this, but before I do, um, I just want to show you guys one more thing really quick. Um, let's say we want to change this one more time, the color of this. Um, so what we could do is go to the paint bucket, or hockey P, and again, choose the color that we want over here. And let's go with a nice kind of, uh, uh, kind of an orangish color. Orangish, reddish kind of thing. Something along the lines of uh, about right there. Looks pretty cool. So we're just going to go ahead and hit this once. And again, enter to confirm. And there we go. So, I mean, as you guys can see, pretty much all the same thing here. Um, there's not really a lot of differences with these. Um, and if you guys, uh, someone on here is more aware of some of the differences and would like to post that on the uh, comments uh, for this video, feel free to do so. That would be um, good, I guess, if you want to do that. Uh, but if not, that's fine. Um, again, you know, as far as I'm concerned, there's not really too many big differences, and it doesn't really matter which one you choose, because um, they all pretty much do the same thing, for the most part. Alright, so anyway, let's go ahead and um, select this again using our Select Shape tool. Now, let's go ahead and uh, pretty much go to our Effect 1 tab here. Click the uh, kind of button here that says Plane. And you'll have a little drop down menu that will appear. And basically, what you can do here is choose one of these options below. I'm going to go ahead and start off with Shaded. Alright, and as you can see, once we hit shade, we have a list of uh, kind of little gadgets here that we can kind of use to maneuver our shading here that we have uh, kind of activated. And um, as you can see, we can kind of change which way the shading is uh, facing. And if you hold down shift while clicking and dragging this little uh, gadget here, you can uh, kind of have it on a snap. And it will kind of snap to each one of these uh, different degrees. 
And uh, you can also type in um, what you would like as well. Um, so you can go like 12 or 32 or whatever the heck you want to do it. Um, for uh, for that, I'm going to go ahead and just keep it at, uh, I guess, 90 degrees. And you can change the offset as well. Alright, as well as the blur. And I mean, pretty self-explanatory. You guys can see what that does. And because I have this uh, shape selected already, it automatically does the changes um, to my shape here. And all I have to do is hit enter to confirm that. And there we go. You'll notice that my uh, box is now shaded. Now let's go ahead and undo that really quick. Okay, and I can't undo that. Okay, well, there we go. Let's just go and take that off. All right, so let's go ahead and say that um, we don't have this selected. However, we still want it to be shaded like last time. So what we could do is um, if you don't want to select it first, we could just go to shaded. And let's say we just want to preview what all this would look like. All right, so we would uh, change it back to our specific parameters. Or not necessarily parameters, but um, kind of the, I guess, degrees. And let's go back to the coordinates here. And another thing you can also do is go to the shadow color and change it to whatever you'd like. And you can go, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and choose a, maybe a blue. That might be kind of cool, huh? And you can also change the alpha for it as well. So, I mean, as you can see, when you change it to full color, it uh, kind of looks more full color there. And when you change it to a little less, uh, more, more transparent, kind of see a bit through it. And that looks pretty cool, if I do say so myself. And you can also check shadow only as well, which will kind of change some things there. And um, let's go ahead and hit OK now. So we basically have our settings, how we want them. Now to apply them, we could either go, um, just basically select this, and um, either do it all again, or we could go ahead and, you notice it kind of overwrites that as well. So we'd have to go ahead and do this again. So you want to make sure that when you're doing this, that you don't do that, because it will kind of lose all that progress that you've made. There we are. Now what you want to do now is go ahead and go to the create shape, click on it, and go spacebar to add the uh, newly created uh, effect to our object and hit enter to confirm. And there we go. We now have, go and render that, we now have our little object here. We have our shading going on and uh, with the specified colors, parameters, or not really sure parameters, but um, kind of uh, direction and all that cool stuff. So the same goes for all of this different stuff as well. Uh, soft edge, you just kind of change up the blur radius for this. Go ahead and apply that. And um, let's go ahead and, okay. Yeah, and you can't see some of these um, just, you know, add a... Uh, uh, I guess right after you kind of change this, unless um, I don't believe, I don't even believe with uh, some of this stuff we can do that either. So you just have to basically render it, which is either Control R or you can go up here to. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, bu -bu -bum -bum. <laughs> As I told you guys earlier in the last tutorial, I never really use this stuff up here, so forgive me if this kind of takes a little bit here. Uh, Render, render, render. <laughs> well, I can't believe I can't find it. Um, <laughs> um, I believe, I don't believe it's called render either. It is. <laughs> okay, if I don't find it in a little bit here, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, stop trying to look for it. Um, isn't it like preview? Yeah, it's preview. Okay. I don't get why they don't call it render. But anyway, um, yeah, that's basically another way to find it up there, the toolbar section. And so that's pretty much that. And the rest of these are pretty much self-explanatory. I mean, you can just kind of go through each one of these and just kind of play around with the settings. And, I mean, eventually you guys will find out what everything does and stuff. It's, it's not really too hard to kind of figure out what all this stuff does. And you guys can just kind of play around with these a little bit. And eventually you'll find um, kind of what all this does. So that's pretty much how to add on those. Alright, and for those of you guys wondering why um, the color is different from when I render this, um, the reason is I currently have this color set on there, and um, basically the program just kind of interpreting it as this square is this color right now. However, the t uh, effect is still on there, but it's not going to put the effect on there um, because it kind of wants just to show the basic color that you originally have, and then obviously when you render it, you can see the effect. So, just in case you guys are wondering about that, and you obviously can add two effects, as you guys can see here. 
Alright, now let's go ahead and go over some of these stuff over here. Um, basically, let me go ahead and just take this off really quick. Just give you guys a better idea of some of these stuff here. There we go. Alright, so basically, um, what this is down here is this is your line color. Now, the line is basically, when I say that, I'm referring to the outline of, the, of this little uh, object here. Now, let's go ahead and change it to, uh, I guess, let's say a pink, or a pink or pinkish purple. There we go. And let's go ahead and, again, using our uh, Create Shape tool, let's go and click, hit Spacebar to confirm, and go ahead and hit Enter to, or rather, Spacebar to add, and Enter to confirm. Render this, and now we have a pink outline. So, again, uh, pretty much self-explanatory. You guys can pretty much guess what this is, and this is really cool. Um, let's say you want to go ahead and change up the, uh, kind of the outline itself, what it looks like. Um, also right here is the width of the outline as well, just in case you guys are wondering about that, and go ahead and change it up to something around, oh, I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe like 8, and go spacebar, and, oh, there we go, spacebar, enter. Now it's a little bigger, and you can also change this a little later too with, uh, another option over here in the, uh, fill subsection, but we're not gonna go over that just yet. Um, but basically this no brush right here is, when you go ahead and click that, you have a list of brushes, just a whole bunch of different cool brushes that you can use, and basically what these brushes can be used for is, let's go ahead and hit the, I don't know, maybe the snowflake, that might look kind of cool. And we can also kind of change up some of this stuff over here, change up some of the, uh, basically the uh, angles of the brush that we've chosen, the spacing, and all that kind of cool stuff. And you guys can play around with those settings as well. They don't really do anything um, too serious, kind of just changing up what these look like down here. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And now when we go ahead and uh, click on our little object here, hit spacebar to confirm and enter to choose that. And I'm going to go ahead and choose something more um, easier to see, like black. All right, now you can see around our edges of the objects, go and render this here, we have a whole bunch of little tiny snowflakes, which is basically what we chose, or I guess these are snowflakes, there's something that look pretty close to snowflakes, so I'm just going to go and call them snowflakes, but basically our brush that we've just chosen is now our border for our object, and you can do some really cool effects with this, um, and really just make your objects pop out, and um, you know, it really just makes a lot of stuff look, um, I guess, so much more cooler, and um, you know, depending if you want something like this, make some nifty little borders and all that kind of cool stuff and again I believe let me go and try something here uh, yes you can kind of uh, change the um, uh, kind of the I guess uh, not really ratio but size of the um, kind of the outline as well um, both by as you guys just saw I went ahead and cheated a little bit by uh, hitting this line width tool which basically all it does is you can choose on a point and um, oh, go and Enter that. You can choose a point on your object and just kind of enlarge it, which will enlarge, or enlarge the uh, outline there. But basically, uh, we're going to be getting to that a lot later, but you can just change it up here as well. So, um, say something like 10 or so, and there we go. Alright, so that's pretty much that, and that is a really cool um, effect that I like to be using, or I like to use, rather. And again, I believe it's pretty much, it goes the same for this as well. Uh, just about that. There we go. So yeah, it pretty much applies it to the border, just kind of like the effects up here as well. Alright, and for the styles, um, pretty much what you could do here is just kind of save different styles, I believe. Um, but I'm not really going to get into that right now. Swatches, um, swatches are basically changing the, um, the color combinations down here. So as you can see, we have this nice little uh, radiant um, kind of color line that we can use to select colors. And as you can see, it changes it up here as well. And when you hit this, um, you can go to basic colors, uh, blue, and uh, cool things like dusk. And basically, it will give you a picture, and you can kind of click anywhere around the picture to kind of choose a picture that, or a color rather, that you see in this picture and use it on here. So, kind of like a reference image, I guess, that you can get colors from, which is really neat. I really like that. And uh, face, choose different face colors if you're creating something like a human. And of course, you can choose a custom image as well which I'm not going to go over that quite yet, but yeah. Um, well, I guess, actually, <laughs> what am I saying? There's actually not really anything to go over for that. All you do is just go custom image and then search around your computer for an image to choose, and then it will bring it down down here, and you can kind of choose the colors for that. And that's pretty much it. Um, this little advanced thing here as well, if you unclick that, it will kind of minimize that, and to get every, all the other options back, you can just go ahead and uh, click advance again. 
And, um, I mean, that's pretty much it, guys. That is the Styles palette. And, um, I know this video took probably a bit longer than some of you guys might have, uh, might have liked, but I really wanted to make sure that I kind of cover everything there. And um, we are going to be covering some other things as well, kind of redoing some things later on the uh, tutorial, kind of using like textures and, and stuff like that, which you can all find in here. But uh, for the most part, that's what the options do, and that's how to kind of move around in the styles palette. And so I hope I was specific enough for you guys, um, which, you know, most likely I was, maybe a bit too specific for some of you guys. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I hope you guys learned uh, a thing or two about the styles palette. And um, later on, um, knowing what all these options do and where they all are and stuff um, will really help to uh, kind of follow along these tutorials as well. So anyway, guys, feel free to comment rate on this video. This is the end of the video video. Uh, uh, this is the end of part two, and um, I can't wait to see you guys back here for part three. We'll be covering um, more of the program because, um, actually not really the program, but more of how to kind of use the program and creating objects and all that fun stuff. So anyway guys, this has been Rex Furry, and uh, feel free to also subscribe to my channel for upcoming updates on future videos and all that kind of cool stuff. And until next video, I'll see you guys next time.